I just want to just make excuse for myself. If you notice, I'm sounding a little bit funny. Um, I, I wanted to sound sexy this morning, so I decided to make my throat a little bit sore. So if, if I sound like Vin Diesel, uh, there's some resemblance. I do apologize in advance. Um, our theme for this year is level up, level up. And I want you to listen past the, the, the krapperigheid in my throat. I want you to look past all the, the decoy elements. And I want you to really open your heart because, you know, Vision Sunday is always a difficult Sunday to preach. You know why? Because people expect one word that lasts the whole year. Ladies and gentlemen, not even your savings that you brought into January is going to last you the whole year. So there's this immense pressure in order to present something that will be sustainable through the year. And our theme for this year is level up. And I want to share something from a real, real deep spiritual place with you this morning. Before we do anything else, I'm just going to read you the passage that I'm going to speak from. And it's 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 19. Now, I do want to warn you, I only have three verses this morning. So, you know it's going to get rough, okay? Because the less scripture there is, there's more to take out. So, luckily you've got the soft chairs, and so you guys should be ready for this. Let's start. So, he, it's Elijah, departed from there and found Elisha, the, the son of Shaphat, okay? And I know I'm pronouncing that correctly because I watched the Mr. Bean movie once. And instead of saying Susan, you say Shushan, okay? So based on that um, life skills, it's Shafat, who was plowing with um, 12 yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the 12. And Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, go back again, for what have I done to you? I've got more verse, verse 21. And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and he went after Elijah and assisted him. Let's pray, then we're going to start preaching. Father, I am dependent on your anointing to rest upon me in this morning, Father. My body is limited, Father. My intellect is limited, Father. But I know that something special happens when you touch my lips, Father. So I just declare and ask with a humble heart before you, would you anoint me once more again this morning as I serve your community, as I serve your children, Father. My prayer is that when I speak, it will be words of power and authority that will last a long time in our hearts, Father. I am dependent on you. We pray that in Jesus' wonderful name and everyone says, Amen. Now I'm going to try and break this part open for you and I'm going to explain it to you this morning. And hopefully there's some spiritual substance for you in this text. But the thing is, I need to explain the pretext to you, okay? So I just want to quickly explain what I mean by pretext. I'm talking about the previous text before the section, okay? The word pretext is actually a reference to when you give a false flow excuse for why you did something, but it's not a false excuse. It's just a short term for me to explain. We're going to look at the previous passages so that we can understand what's taking place with Elijah and Elisha. So we're going to just rewind a couple of verses, and hopefully you will understand the context. So it starts off with this. It says, you can go to the next one. and says, Ahab and Jezebel, and we're just going to stop right there. Okay. If you are new to church... These are the two most offensive names in the Bible that you can find, okay? Jezebel is not, I mean, you, you, in, church, in church terminology, even if you use the name Jezebel as a joke, you are frowned upon. It's like a curse word, okay? You never say, Ach, Lifi, Mayo, Jezebel, come sit by me. You never do that, not even with your mother-in-law, okay? You just don't, you don't do that at all. Ahab and Jezebel... They were a king and a queen in the nation of Israel. They were ruling from Samaria. But what made them specifically hated, if I can use that word, because that's literally what happened, was previous kings integrated different gods in Israel. Okay, But these two persecuted the priests of Yahweh. So in other words, they took stuff a step further. It's not only introducing other gods. It was persecuting 
can I use the word church? Although the church did not exist then, but you, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So these two people were, they were vriet. They were, I don't know what's vriet. They were e cruel. They were cruel. They were evil. They did a lot of bad things. And this is the context of the build up to the story. Um, and Ahab and Jezebel uh, told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So uh, this is whole story where Elijah and the Baal prophets, they were fighting and checking whose God was the best. And so it was this whole scene and um, the Baal priests, they lost the battle. Okay, They lost the, the miracle. And so this is what's just basically taking place here. And carry on to the next verse for me. And then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, the prophet, saying, So may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. In other words, Jezebel is threatening the prophet of Yahweh and going to take his life. Verse 3. Then he was afraid and he arose and ran for his life. Okay, so I'm not talking about just something small. I'm talking about someone, a prophet standing up for God, but he's, he's overly fearful in a situation, okay? And rightly so, because if Jezebel gets her hands on him, this is not just going to be a beautiful execution. We're talking about something very serious because Jezebel needs to make a point that the gods that she's serving is stronger than Elijah, okay? Now, just bear with me. I know this is what's the point. We, we're going to get to that part, okay? So he ran for Elijah and came to Beer, Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Verse 4, we're going to go through these ones very quickly. Um, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, wilderness, running away, away from the civilization, and came and sat down under a broom tree. I just want to pause there. I did a, I did a sermon on this, the, the broom tree breakdown a couple of years ago, where we spoke about this whole passage. I'm not going to um, reteach that at all, but you can go check that out. But in any case, and he asked that he might die. A prophet doing God's will, doing the right things, come to a position where his circumstances is so severe, he wants to sacrifice his life. He wants to commit suicide. Someone serving God that wants to take their own life, not because they did something wrong, because their obedience to God was so severe they couldn't handle the pressure anymore. This is not criticism. I can actually, what I, I want to, there's sympathy in my voice when I share this with you. There's sadness in my voice when I share this with you. This is not a weak man. This is a strong man doing miracles, following God, and he comes to a point where he doesn't want to do it anymore. It's better for him not to be here to handle the pressure, and he wants to die. He asks God, would you please take my life? I want to die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. This is the build-up. This is the pretext to this quick passage we talk about between Elijah and Elisha. Now, this becomes significant. So I just want you to put a pin in this because we're going to link this pretext up with the story now. The theme this morning is level up, level up. It's time for us to take a level up in our lives. And I want to share this word for you for this year. Now, I'm going to start preaching. You can start the timer. <laughs> you can go to the verse for me, please. So remember the text we just read, okay, when, we, when I opened. So he departed, Elijah departed from there. Remember this whole drama taking place. Elijah wanting to die. The later text says God shows up and he gives him some instructions and Elijah's fo Elijah follows that. And now we come onto the scene that I want to talk to you about. So Elijah departed from there and he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat. It's interesting. Listen carefully to me. Listen very carefully to what I'm going to say to you now. In a moment when Elijah was going through the most difficult thing in his life, in a moment where he wants to take his own life, he, he just wanna, he wants to pass away. He has got no desire to be here anymore. You know what God's solution is to a man who is on his last string? God gives him a son. How on earth does this make sense, ladies and gentlemen? When God brings a solution to carry Elijah through one of the most difficult seasons in his prophetic ministry as he ministers here on earth, God comes and he gives him a little bit more responsibility. It doesn't seem logical. It doesn't make sense. But God knows something. Something changes on our inside when we begin to become responsible for someone else. You see, 
Elijah on his own was an individual, was a person. But the moment God gave him this revelation of Elisha, something changed and he had willpower to suddenly go on in one step further. Suddenly something changed because now there was an added responsibility in his life. Something shifted. I want you to pick up on this. Now, if you're new to church, this is not going to make sense to you, okay? But if you've been following Jesus for a while, you're going to make perfect sense. The moment your life begins to become a sacrifice for people around you, you grow. The man you were, and, and please excuse me if you don't have children. This is not anything funny towards you guys. I just want to explain. The man I was before I had kids and the man I am today is not the same person. Can I tell you something? When I was younger, there was a lot of reckless behavior. Okay? There was less fear. Okay? You did stupid things because you want to be funny. You jump off places. You run around and do crazy stuff. You look how far you can jump down a hill and hopefully not break anything. Okay? Now I climb down a stair and I need to rest for five minutes. But back then, you're reckless, you're reckless. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have kids, before you had kids, okay, you jump off a cliff very high into water. No fear. Sharks, fine, okay. You take a selfie, it's fine, okay. Because you, you, you've got a six-pack and everything is fine, okay. Now when you have kids, you are so scared of a fizzer and a marshmallow, it's not even funny. A fizzer, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know how scared I was of a fizzer when my daughter had a fizzer? My boys, I've got two, it's fine. But my daughter, when she had a fizzer in her hand, it was nerve And you know what happens is, because I realized that life is precious. I realized that I need to live for something more than myself because someone is dependent on me. And when, when, when Elijah comes to a point, this major prophet handling a difficult situation, God gives him a son in order to give him the strength to endure some of the most difficult times in his life. I want to share something with you this morning. If you want to level up this year, start thinking about others, someone else than yourself. If you are going through a difficult season in your life, I want to share something for you. Stop thinking about yourself and start looking for someone else that you can invest your heart in. Why? Because this was God's solution. It's not going to make sense now, but let me tell you, speak to anyone, anyone that's been serving God for a while. Speak to anyone that put their problems aside in order to serve someone else. Something changes on the inside. There's this form of leveling up that happens that cannot happen if you only think about yourself. So if you want to, if you want to change something this year, look for someone that you can just pour your heart into. Look for someone that's weaker than you. Look for someone that's, that's um, more foolish than you. I was looking for, I wanted to say stupid, but I mean, let's not use that. <laughs> I said it in any case. Look for someone that's more f foolish, okay? Because you, you have gone a little bit for, before them. And when you, when you add that into, into their life, there's something that changes on the inside. So when Elijah went through a difficult time, God's solution was, I'm going to give you a son. I want you to understand in this perspective of Elijah that Elijah leveled up in his spiritual walk in this moment because now he was responsible for someone else. So I want you to imagine this, this prophet doing phenomenal things and God gives him a son and God speaks to him and says that if you want to level up in your life, I'm going to give you a son to be responsible. But it's not only Elijah who got to level up. We have this dude, Elisha who also had a level up experience. Okay? So let's just break this down to the next part. And Elisha, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the 12th. Now, I want you just to pick up on this. okay? According to the scholars, it seems like Elisha was in a, I don't want to say wealthy household, but I want to say this word, they definitely weren't poor. Okay? So I want you to imagine a son in a house where there is a well-established business, he is working in the field, they've got 12 groups of functioning um, 
tool kits, which is animals back then. They were playing the fields. They were making things ready in this middle of this whole battle between Ahab and Jezebel and all those things. He's just doing his thing. He's just doing his thing. So it's not someone that did not have nothing. It's someone that had an established life. His current life was comfortable. His current life was well suited. He had a journey. He had a, he had a um, system of progression where he can grow in the business with the hopes that eventually it will become his property. So it's not someone with nothing. It's someone with a background, with a history, with a connection, with a family, and with people that's working for him. Okay? So this is very important. Because now the story carries on. And it says, And Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. Now, you read that. But it's like, okay. But I want to try and demonstrate that to you this morning. So I'm going to ask my son to come stand by me, my, my eldest. So, I'm not sure how many of you will recognize this, this jersey. But this is, this is my dad's jersey, this, right? So, it's not that he always wore this to church, but especially when he got a little bit weaker, this was his go-to go -to jersey. This is what he would, he would tend to usually put on. So, Maybe to you who don't know us, this is maybe insignificant, okay? But to me, to our family, to those who knew my dad, this is a resemblance of him. This is something that reminds me of him. This awakens memories, okay? This is a, it, I know it's a clothing piece, okay? But to me, this is sentimental. There is a legacy connected to this, okay? So I want you to understand, Elijah walking past, God gives him a revelation. Elijah is busy in the field. And what happens is, Elijah takes his coat and he puts it on the shoulders of Elisha. Now, as insignificant as this may seem to certain people, what this represents, as I'm, put, I'm putting something on my son that represents something bigger than himself. I'm putting something on my son that represents a legacy that he did not build. But this is a transfer. This is a calling. This is a calling out to say, listen here, God said that I need to put something on you. So I want you to imagine Elisha just doing his thing. Maybe not even having a conversation. And Elijah walking past, seeing Elisha. And Elisha is just doing it. He's just playing Fortnite, losing and being, being bad and all this thing, begging his dad for, for V-Bucks. And then, then Elijah comes past and someone that is unaware Someone that's busy with their life. In a single moment, it changes immediately. Why? Because God intervenes and says that there is a legacy. There is a history. There is a purpose. There is a function. And whether you are aware of this function or not, whether you are familiar with this function, whether you believe in this function or not, Elijah comes past and all he does is this. He puts on a cloak. Thank you. You can answer. And the Bible speaks about something extremely significant. So in order to try and illustrate this to you, I want to show you, just put a pin in this, a person who means a lot to me, someone that is dear to my heart, someone that is very special, So, the first thing that I want to mention is that, gentlemen, this is how you get off from the couch back into your own room again, okay? They're just giving you a free tip over there. The second thing is, you need to decide which one is my favorite person because there's two pictures. Okay, so I, I just <laughs> what I really wanted to show you is the person that that coat represents. You can go to the next one my dad over there and there he's happy because everyone is looking at him i know he needs to laugh and smile next to leandra he wanted me to sit there but just for the photo i just wanted to make sure when i talk about my favorite person okay just put the next one on it's that one okay not this one it's that i just wanted you to be clear on this so just just in case because the previous one you know you it's open for interpretation but this one i just want to make clear okay 
And, and the point just being is, my dad, that's, that's the person whose cloak was represented this morning. That's the person. And for some of you, you maybe don't even know him. But most of us, this is someone that's special. This is someone that's dear to us. And giving over that person's cloak to someone else is a significant moment in anyone's life. That transition that's taking place. So I do not want you to miss the significance of this moment taking place when Elijah takes off his coat and he puts it on someone called Elisha that's working in a field. And a massive thing takes place. It, oh, I want to explain it, it, It's so significant that Elisha doesn't know what to do. Okay, Because the Bible says in this next part, he explains it, and he says, and, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. Now hold up. Why did he have to run after Elijah if he just walked with him? Now what happened is, the cloak was transferred, and I think Elisha was in a moment of shock for a second. And you know what Elijah did? Like any other good dad did, says, if you're not following, I'm just going to walk in any case, okay? You must just catch up. And Elisha realizes that there's a significant moment and the decision needs to be made in the season. And he ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my mother, uh, my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. So notice that Elisha is still very much connected to his current life. He's very much connected to his current season. There is emotional connectedness. This is not just, yes, I'm following. This is, I've got people that loves me. Okay, I want you to pick up on this. In this transition of a season, in this transition of a level up, Elisha is still doing right to the people who carried him through through his current level. Some people, when they level up, their character stays behind. Some people have the ability that doors open, but their character doesn't follow. But Elisha shows us something, and it's a vital key that I want to leave with you. In a level up transition in your life, do not forget the people who got you to the level where you earned the were in the first place. And even when God shows up and a mantle, a cloak is handled over, Elisha still had this thing where I need to go say thank you to the people who got. God is going to take me to a new season. He's going to take me in a different area. He's going to take me in a different influence. But you still leave the people who got you to where you are in the right place. You know what can I criticize for one second? Thank you, Patrick. I get frustrated with people who come to Christ and they throw their old friends in the dustbin. I'm not talking about when you make life changes and people fall away. I'm talking about when you become too good for the people that was there for you when you weren't in the church. Let me, can I share this with you? Can I share with you? Transition to a healthy environment, okay? Transition. But there's something honorable and respectful about greeting people properly in your previous season. There's something honorable and respectful for treating them like people as they are. Because there's connectedness, there's emotional elements. I'm not saying continuing with a lifestyle. I'm talking about making sure that you do not throw people away. Because in God's kingdom, you are starting off with the wrong foot. Because guess what? Those people you were hanging out with that you don't want to hang out with now anymore, God loves them just as much as He loves you. And if you do not transition carefully, you are going to cause more damage than you're going to cause any good. Now again, don't, don't take me out of context. I'm just saying, Elisha is teaching us in a level of process, it's important to take care of what carried you through up until this point. Change your life. But don't throw people away. Just because God revealed something to you. They will need you in the season. Be careful of self-righteousness. when you're trying. But in any case, I don't want to linger too much on that. I think you guys get the point. The next part. And then I like Elijah. He's so polite. And he says, and he said to him, go back again for what have I done to you? Okay, and I was like, well, the, the, the next one mate did, didn't he? It's got nothing to do with me, you know. But you need to understand, Elijah understands something. That the authority of the calling is not in his hands. 
When God called, God called. And Elijah says, this has got nothing to do with me. Elijah, I was leveling up. I was obedient. I declared what God revealed to me. I'm calling you as a son that can follow me. And eventually Elijah took over and did very similar miracles like Elijah did. And these were two major, major prophets that did phenomenal work on, on God's behalf. Okay, So this, uh, we know how the story ends. And then he says, but what have I done to you? This is a personal thing. Okay, I'm available, but this is you need to sort out what you need to sort out. And Elijah, moving on, gives him permission to greet properly and make peace with his previous level where he was. Carry on for me, please. And he returned from following him and took the yoke of the oxen and sacrificed them and bore their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people and they ate. And then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. I just want you to pick up. He wasn't only greeting his parents. He was taking care of the people that worked with him as well. He was greeting his colleagues. He was greeting the people that was with him. It's not just family elements. It's those people because there was a legacy here, ladies and gentlemen. There was a history here. And Elijah does. He says, if, uh, uh, this is just my interpretation. If God wants to bless the new season, I need to make sure I need to honor those who took me to this place. And when I transition well, there will be blessing. So, what's the point? Why am I sharing this with you? I want you to pick up on something. That if you want to level up this year, if you want 2024 to be a new season in your life, there's a couple of stuff that you go to the next one, you need to stop doing this year. You see, when Elisha was called, he had to stop certain things. There was something he was comfortable with. There was a current function. He had to stop living in that function. There's certain things that you need to stop doing in 2024 in order for you to be able to take a new season in your life. There were mistakes. There were bad decisions. There are just plain habits. There are just unhealthy stuff that you catch on in 2023. But if you want to level up, you need to stop. Okay, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's not just about stopping the past. Okay? I want you to pick up. Because this is, this is a vital key. A vital key to growth in any area of your life. It's not only stopping something. It's also about start. Start doing something this year. I'm keeping it here. Start doing something this year. Okay? I want you to take note. Sometimes we fight so hard to stop doing something in our lives. And then when we finally get it right to stop it, we notice it only lasts for a couple of seasons and then we jump back to that again in that element. The reason is because instead of just stopping, you need to stop with one thing and you need to start with something else, okay? In other words, it's not just the negative... Thank you, Eskom. It's not just the negativity element. No, can you let the aircon answer it, I believe. It's not just the negativity of about stopping something. It's about the positive decision of starting something as well. Okay? This is very, very significant. Okay? It's not about only ending the bad. Okay? In Elisha's context, it doesn't mean it necessarily was bad. But I'm giving you advice. If you're deciding to follow in God, if you're deciding to make a decision for Christ, it's not just about stopping. Okay? Can I take old school church preaching for a second it's not about stop smoking it's not about stop drinking it's not about stopping just using bad language those are all good things to stop okay but if you do not start a couple of new things it's going to be worthless oh or the influence will be minor you will have better conversations you will be sober for a while maybe that's not always the best decision okay but in any case that's up to you guys okay the point being is we are so focused on stopping that we never get to the point where we start something. So I want to share this with you. It's not only about ending the bad. It's, a, oh yeah, I say. it's about replacing the old with the new. It's, I'm going to say this once more, okay? It's about replacing the old stuff with something new. So Elisha, for him to level up, it was not only about stopping, but it was about starting a new season in his life, okay? So if you want to level up, there's a couple of stuff you need to stop doing, and there's a couple of things that you need to start doing. So this is what I want you to do this year. Maybe last year, you came to visit us once or twice. So if you want to level up, I want you to take what you had last year 
and improve on that. Okay? Maybe this is the year where you make the decision that I'm going to commit myself to show up regularly. Fantastic. What about the guys who've been here the whole regular part? Well, I want you to step up in your life. And I want you to, instead of just attending regularly, I want you to get involved and serve regularly. Now, what have you been serving for some time, okay? Because the, uh, everyone's on different levels. If you want to level up this year, when you reach the point like Elijah where you're already serving God, I want to encourage you and say, if you want to level up this year, it's time that you get yourself a son and a daughter. And then you start this process with them. And so what happens is we are going to level up. But here's the thing. If you're going to stay like Elisha plowing the fields, there's no level up that's going to take place because nothing old stopped and nothing new began this year. So there's going to be some work that you need to put in this year if you want to level up. So I want to encourage you, if you want to follow Christ, it's good. Stop drinking, stop smoking, stop using bad language, but replace it with something that is new and fresh in your life, like showing up for church every now and then okay if, if you don't attend regularly maybe try praying for a time try buying a devotional book try to replace the bad things with new things and in that season it's a way and a process to level up in your life but nothing will happen if like this morning as i'm giving you the cloak this morning nothing will happen if you keep the cloak on your shoulders and you keep on plowing the field. 2024 is going to be the exact same year for you as the previous year was. Because you did not change any. You did not stop and you did not start anything. Some of you guys have been recently joined our church. Come and you guys know. The person you were six months ago is not the same person you are today. Why? Because habits changed in your life. You stopped a couple of things. You started a couple of new things in your life. There was this transitional phase in your life. So I want to encourage you today, if you want to take a word with you today, I want to speak over you, and I, don't want, I want to ask you something. Don't you want to try and level up your walk with God this year? Don't you want to try and level up your walk with God? This, this calling of Elijah is this beautiful story of a senior guy going through difficult things, and God giving him a son to carry him through. So Elijah leveled up in his life in the season. Elisha also leveled up in the season as a son. And I want to extend this to you. You can also level up, but make those changes this year. And I, this is not, I don't want to give you any guarantees or anything like this. But just talk to some people on our team. I, I, just talk to them. How their life changed. Not because of Baruch. Not because of this building, but their life changed when they got to meet God. Their life changed when they took the cloak on and they leveled up in their life. Their life changed when it wasn't more about them anymore, but it was people around them. So I want to encourage you. My prayer for you, my prayer for me, is that forget about the, this is the year of the serpent of a lot of money and abundant blessings and all those things. I want, I want to challenge you for 2024 and say, don't let 2024 be the same spiritual year as the last year was in your life. May this year for you end different than the last year. And may you level up in your spiritual journey with God. Maybe you were a son and you became a father. Maybe you were just an adult and now you have a son and you become a father or mother. And you're just growing in your walk with God. But don't leave it this year. Do something different. Improve your spiritual walk with God this year. And then we have a conversation at the end of the year. And I want to, th this, is, this is not prosperity preaching. Again, go speak to our team. God will show up in your life because he's faithful. This is, this is not an empty promise. You test him, you follow, you show your obedience, and you will see God showing up in your life. If you don't take my word for it, speak to someone spiritual in your life. Speak to someone that you want to trust. I want to, I want to encourage you. Change this year. Level up this year. Make the change, and I'm going to, I can, I almost want to guarantee you, but it's in God's hands. God will show up in your life, and you will not be the same this year. And you will level up in your life. Because something on your inside changed. Let's pray together. Father, you have blessed us with a new year, with a new season. Thank you for your faithfulness. Father, my prayer is, as we were looking at Elijah and Elisha's story, Father, that we will take that 
step of replacing the old with the new, Father, so that we can level up in our lives. Father, I'm praying for the fathers and the mothers in our house, Father. May they be obedient to your revelation, Father. May they always be loving. May they always be caring. May they always be sensitive as they mentor those, Father. I'm praying for the sons and the daughters, people who are new, Father. May you keep them faithful in their walk, faithful in their journey, Father. As they're slowly taking steps forward, Father, may you reveal your heart to them, Father, as we grow in a new season, Father. May 2024 be a year where Baruch Church experiencing a level up on all areas of our spiritual journey, Father. We know that you are faithful. And we want to please you through this year. We pray that in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone says, Amen.